it up. And I'm Brody These Nuts Moore. You're getting worse and worse <laughs> with these. And we're going to present all the goodies we've gathered, which we will discuss and hopefully argue. But luckily for you, 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 and everybody, there's a mute button here. We can shut each other up for 30 seconds. Ooh, cannot wait. Remember, we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. truth. So let's get to it, shall we? Mm, for our first story, we're taking a look at the new German league that Riot Games is helping to create. Riot is partnering with Freaks for You Gaming and Legardaire Sports to expand the League of Legends Premier Tour into a new German language league. The Premier Tour is a tournament circuit focused on German, Austrian, and Swiss markets. The new league is meant to develop both German language players and teams, as well as serving as a building ground for the LEC. Brody! Yeah! Do you think that these more language leagues and esports is great instead of just a broad regional league well, instead? First off, what? I was actually excited when you said circus at first. I know. There. And I was really hoping there was going to be a League of Legends circus. That would be really fun. Okay, maybe but, next year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's it's great. Eventually, once an esport or anything gets big enough, you have to start focusing on individual communities, right? You can't just start to govern just thousands and thousands of people mm. with one league or just a couple leagues. You have to start developing that local talent to make sure that it's sustainable into the future. Because right. if you don't have good new talent coming up, then how are you going to have a professional league if it's just the same? You want the excitement of new rising stars, right? Mm -hmm. So developing those leagues regionally also mm -hmm. gives people a sense of pride for their region. Like, oh, yeah, you know what? Look at all these great German players I can get behind. Yeah. And now you've got so much more support inherently built into your system because people want to support their uh, communities. Definitely, and this now means that more community events as well will happen around mm -hmm. them, right? And they'll get more people involved within the country into League of Legends, but they're always always has to be something already in place there for this to happen. Like for Ride to take notice and for them to actually build something, well, yeah, yeah, that yeah, means yeah, there's already been a focus testing, there's already been something that's put in place to make sure they will indeed reap the rewards from this new yeah. system. So, uh, no, I'm super happy. I'm super happy for all the German fans of League of Legends. I'm super happy for the players, maybe people that are just playing League of Legends at home but didn't think that maybe they'd have an opportunity to do something like this. Yeah. That's very exciting <laughs> for all of them. So any kind of growth in this space, obviously you and I will be down for. I don't think there's much to argue here. I think yeah. that you and I are pretty much on board with just everybody getting involved in esports, whatever country it is. Yeah, no, and you're, League of Legends ha has it. You're right. It's, there, you have to have that grassroots thing first. And if Riot already saw that, hey, look, there's this yeah. good grassroots community here we know if we implement something here officially it's going to be supported mm -hmm. and it's going to be a, a great step up leading into the LAC stepping stone oh, great people. wow look at that we agree Aww, on something friends. here let's talk about some fun stuff G2A the great market seller of game keys they have once again pissed off game developers G2A has taken out sponsored ads on Google when people search certain games as multiple developers said they make zero dollars on sales for G2A especially since some of the game keys might not have been acquired legally this has led to some devs openly telling fans to pirate the games instead of buying them off G2A since they don't want the store to receive a single dollar off their game sales yep yeah so yep. Marissa, um, what do you think about devs right now telling people to pirate their games? This has actually been happening for a long time, not just G2A, but with other gaming retailers that, mm -hmm. um, you know, take in games. We don't need to name names. But they take in games and they resell them at a much higher price yeah. than you would find if the game was just, I don't know, resellable somewhere online. <laughs> That's the yeah. thing, though, is that, like, people want, like, consumers want a way to, you know, get rid of their stash if they've got one and then get more games instead. So it is like a pawn shop system in place. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, the developers do not see or do not reap any kind of reward from the that company reselling their game and it's really unfortunate there needs to be something put in place but how can they how can that happen how can we make that happen where these guys actually should pony up because they're just ripping their wars of someone else's creativity it's literally I they mean, operate that, like I know, a pawn shop I feel like I feel like it's almost you need the the government to get involved yeah. whichever you know wherever G2A is based that government needs to get involved and say hey this is stealing, like you're you're profiting yeah. off of someone else's product. This mm -hmm. is someone else's artwork, right? Yeah. I've, and I've seen this actually just across different industries when it comes to art too. Um, one of my favorite artists, Mike Shinoda, he, he uh, f with From Lincoln Park, there was a while ago that one of their albums got leaked, mm -hmm. right? And he said, I don't care if you guys listen to this yeah. and, and pirate it, just please listen to it in the order that we put it on the album because there's a story to tell. Okay, okay. So a lot of the artists just want people to Appreciate enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, right? And they don't want others to profit off of it. So it's like the same thing with these guys. The game developers are making art. They're making a product they actually mm. care about. They don't care if you're going to pirate it 
because they just want you ultimately to experience it. They just really don't so want someone else to be making money off this of it. This is just another reason for us to just buy and download games from our devices, right? That's that's really just all this is. If you buy a physical copy of something, like, unfortunately, this is going to happen. Moral and of the like story, the, if yeah. you pirate everything, the bad guys will never make money. That, no, that's not true because the people that are creative making something, Brody, why do you trigger me like that? Honestly, it's easy. Just, uh, the Esports Hall of Fame celebrates esports players who have made a huge impact in the world of esports. It's currently seeking new inductees, which is causing some people to question its importance. Complaints include focusing on FPS players above all other esports, a panel that is biased towards those kinds of games, and the fact that there's no governing esports body to guide the process. In short, these are the exact same complaints that people make towards sports and music hall of fame. <laughs> Brody, do yes. you think that there should even be any? Sports Hall of Fame? Like, should this even exist? And and how would you even make one that would be even Steven? Yeah, uh, abs absolutely. Um, great show, by the way. Good callback. Um, but <laughs> that's a throwback. But yeah, no, I, I absolutely think there should be a, a Hall of Fame because I, I think a, a lot of these people, they put work in for years and years and years. Some of these players have led the way, paved the path. Um, not even players, uh, you know, other people in the scene, like Golden Boy and stuff like that. These guys have paved the path for other people in sure. esports, right? And I think those people should be recognized for the amount of work that they've put in for future generations to look back and be like, oh yeah, you remember this player, this uh, commentator, whatever, they, they did a lot for the scene even though they don't know it directly. There's somewhere for them to learn that yeah. history, right? So I think absolutely that needs to happen. But yeah, that panel needs to be diversified because it's if it's too biased, you're gonna overlook the importance of some of these other players in other scenes, right? Yeah. Like there could be like a mobile player out there that FPS panel's not gonna know at all yeah. about and why this person's important. So that guy's never going to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I know, that's the main problem. And yes, it is just like how it works in Hollywood. There is campaigning that needs to be done. Like you, it's really all about who you know and I don't, whose friends you are with. So what, what about- it's, it's unfortunate, but like even you're seeing that even some like hosts that get nominated or whatever it is they're all part of like the same agency you know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah. it's it's very much a, like a who's who but like you who you know you situation. Get nominated? no I don't <laughs> expect to get nominated for any of these things at all ever like if that did happen I would be totally surprised I'd vote for you. but oh my god thanks Freddie you're That's welcome so sweet no it's it really is just a who you know situation unfortunately so that will leave anybody salty anywhere about this it's just I don't know yeah what about, what about, their pockets. What about each what about each esport having its own governing body to do their own Hall of Fames and then you can take you know the best ones from each of those into an like ultimate Hall of Fame. Well, I mean they should just have Golden Boy on on that act on the body in in general. For Golden the, Boy run everything. Yeah, no, he's literally no, the host for every show no, and now he runs the he Esports is, Hall of Fame. Because he has actually dipped his toe in literally, <laughs> every literally esport. everything. So he knows at least he can say, listen, get this person to do this, get this person to do this, because he's met everybody across the board when it comes to all these esports. He's literally done he's done everything, Brody. Everything. Well there it's From it's you, yeah. it's final we nominate you, Golden just, Boy, just as the Esports Hall of Boy. Fame panel. You're the only, exactly. you're the only one on there. Anyways, yeah. our last story is taking a look at Hollywood specifically, how it seems to be trying to make as many video game movies and TV shows as it possibly can. It started with Myst, the 90s adventure game, which is apparently being made into a TV and film universe. Then Square Enix announced it's making a live action TV show based on Final Fantasy XIV. And to top it all off, Cyberpunk 2020's creator said that a movie based on the tabletop game is much more likely thanks to Keanu Reeves appearing in the upcoming video game. Now, yeah, Marissa, yeah. Yeah. we know yeah. we have a history in the video game world yeah. of not having good video game movies. Should they just give up, or do you think they finally turn a new leaf and, and we're gonna have some great produced video game movies and TV shows now? Never surrender. Never, Never <laughs> surrender. No, you try, and you try again until you get it right, okay? So if this is what it takes, all of these different things happening, then fine, let's make it so and let's make it good. That's all. It's time for everybody to rise up. It's not as simple as no, making it good. It's, it's time for gamers to have their moment in the sun, okay? This is it. It's our time. No more of these Hollywood whatever the F. All right, <laughs> you see, you see how amazing these superhero movies do. Okay, yeah. that's because this world actually does belong to the geeks. It really does. Mm -hmm. So let's shine even higher. Let's go even higher with video game movies that are actually good. Okay, I didn't see this one. I didn't see it yet. Is it good? I haven't seen it either, actually. Okay, okay maybe this is our fault, because we actually go to the movie to watch it. <laughs> yeah, all the actual good... No, it's because yeah. I've been jaded, dude. Like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm so used to these movies just not 
popping off. So I'm like, why that. would I go watch them, right? Like, I, I'd rather just go play the games than watch them because of the history of video game movie and content. It's just, I'm worried that if they keep doing this and pump out more, now we have three things coming up. And what if they all suck? Now people laugh at, at gamers' content anymore. Wow, you guys actually enjoy this stuff? You're weird. Kate, Brody, what if like you just never left your house ever and then you wouldn't have met that your awesome be, girlfriend that's and goals. then you wouldn't have... No, no, that's not how life is. You're supposed to get out there. You're supposed to try new things. You're supposed to experiment, okay? But do it with, you know, things that aren't going to hurt <laughs> be you or, people or others around you. Yeah, be irresponsible. Stay inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you, you, we, should, we have to support these things, right? Or else they're going to die. So let's just try to get up to the movies this weekend. Maybe watch a little Detective Pikachu if it's still up there. I don't know. <laughs> I just, no, like seriously though, I haven't seen the new Avengers yet. Uh, what? I know! I know oh because, God. guys, like three hours in the theater, uh... You're lucky I hate spoilers. I was gonna troll you. No, it's okay. I I, it's already been spoiled, don't worry. Okay. Uh, okay, it's time to check in with streamers and clip it. Our first clip comes from Trihex after he spent 10 hours trying to set the world record on Mario Maker 2 level. <laughs> Tell me I'm free. <sighs> oh my god. I've Yo, been... let's spam tryhards in the chat right yes. now. Yes. Yo, oh my dude, gosh, straight up. He, That's amazing. He was, he, I've been watching a few clips from him actually. He's been popping off on that game, bro. Like, I. I these are one of those games, and this is why, if anyone is like, why do you watch other people play video games? That oh, is exactly why. Is because I could not accomplish anything like that. I, I don't have the perseverance. Maybe if I put time into it, but I do not have the perseverance to be able to put myself through that. Oh, All the no, time to I try it. Immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that he's out there doing that for us, thank you very much, Trihouse. Oh, seriously, Bless. we heart you so hard. Honestly, I was just completely enthralled the whole time. I'm going to watch it again. All right, so next good. up, we have another clip from Moon Moon because producer Tyler just doesn't seem to get enough of Mario Maker 2 trolls breaking his spirit. <laughs> think we need to start tracking her mic during those because your reactions are so good. How's he, how's he gonna get over there? You're so into it. It's so much fun. Only because like I'm not playing. If I were playing, for just forget it. Like uh, just I actually done. I'd be really want to see you try to play these. We'll now. just we'll just do a stream of can me we, failing. Can we cancel all the unmuted's next week and just have her sitting here trying to beat those Doing games? Right, I would too. That is content. Okay, yeah. Let's let's take a vote. Uh, ones, <laughs> ones, if you just want to see, oh, just kidding, we're not going to do it. All right, <laughs> it's time for the best time of day. We scroll through Twitterverse to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on the timeline. We especially love it when they share dumb comments and they get on their YouTube vids. What's Good Games host Brittany says, Throughout my career, I've been told I'm not a true gamer for many reasons. The way I play, the way I look, etc. But tonight I heard arguably the most compelling reason of all from someone who watched my Layers of Fear 2. Let's play. Some idiot writes, come on, you don't really scream like that, especially if you're a true gamer. What? <laughs> you gotta get what? the gamer scream. 
What does that even mean, dude? The gamer screen, like, dude. What does that Do even you not mean? even know? I'm so sick of these gatekeepers. Honestly, I'm so freaking sick of them. It's like, just let people, can you let people live their life? She's clearly playing the game. If you're playing a video game, that means that you're a gamer. It doesn't mean how good or bad you are. If you're enjoying yourself playing that game, if you find gaming as a hobby, you're a gamer. Please leave people alone. Get a freaking life. Play your own damn games, honestly. Holy smokes, these people. Actually, you know what? What? I don't have anything else to add to that. Oh, okay. Well, well said. Thanks. Well said. Hey, look, another day, another decent profound thought from our buddy Hug. He says, I understand it's considered disrespectful to swipe wooden chopsticks together to remove possible splinters, but can I get a pass if the restaurant has cheap chopsticks that splinter easily, or do I need to hop back on my fork bullish? <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a pretty disrespectful dude, I guess, because yeah. I had no idea that that was considered disrespectful. Yeah, am I, am I the only that. one? No, I didn't know either. I had no idea. Sevi says he's also disrespectful. He's pointing at himself. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't know this was. It, if it is really, I guess, let us know. I but had we, no idea. I was just doing it because other people were doing it, like I was following the trend. Oh, I was, I did, I did because it's, it, it works. I'm like, oh, look, I don't have to have splinters in my teeth anymore. Yeah, I didn't actually know that was a thing. I saw people doing it, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I just started doing it too. I didn't know what it was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What's All happening, right. guys? <laughs> okay, just moving on. Our last profound thought comes from executive assistant at Twitch, Amarise. In response to just so many people and their opinions about the cast announcement for the live action Little Mermaid movie. She says, tired of re reading all these whiny ass takes from whiny ass people who got impressed how much they already don't like a thing that ain't even out yet. Y'all need a calmer hobby. Yeah, for real. Yo, what was your take on this? We didn't discuss this. What was your take on the Little Mermaid announcement? I actually only found out uh, when I came into the studio today. I okay. didn't see any of this going on. Um, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, at the uh, here's the thing. I'm very much about keeping characters true to their origins because there's a reason characters are made certain ways, right? You, so, so you mean race as well? Huh? Yeah, yeah, everything. Okay. Everything about a person uh, or but, a character, right? Because it's that's the character. But what? Dis Disney, uh, I think for me, uh, has a chance right now to rebrand some of this stuff yes. because as we know, a lot of their original content was a little sexist and racist. Um, oh, they, and they're based off of stories that are generally a little more gruesome if you read the source material. So I think Disney, for me at least, gets a pass on, on trying to re-image yeah. some of their stuff. I agree. They're the only ones. Other than that, I've seen other you know characters from fictional things changed, and I'm like, I don't agree with that because that's not that character. And it, sometimes right. it can actually change what a character is and means sure. if you change too many details. So sure, yeah, Disney, course, I'll, give the free, not, I'll give the pass though. Yeah, for sure, but there's no like, a mermaid is a made up thing, right? So because mm -hmm. a mermaid is a made up thing, it could really what do you be mean any made up? race or color. It doesn't have to be, like it's not, what, who says mermaids have to be white, you next, know? Next, like it doesn't make any sense. Next thing you're gonna tell me that Santa ain't real. Oh, Come on, me. get out of here with this. I'm sorry. Anyways, let's move on because it is time to get to some crowd control. It's time for awesome things. Well, except for this first one, it's <laughs> just cute. I decided to be nice to Marissa Aww. and have another nice post like yesterday, and I have really nothing else to add except just showing you. <laughs> so, Choco oh. Anuki made some uh, bubble stars in the style of oh summer my fruits. Gosh, so cute! I love the dragon fruit one. The dragon fruit is so nice. Mostly because I just love dragon Have you ever had dragon of fruit? Of course, it's so refreshing. Oh. It doesn't really taste like anything, but it's super refreshing. Okay. Yeah. New plan. What? This weekend. What? Detective Pikachu and dragon fruit party. That, oh. that is a popping off party. Okay, wait, I thought you were already having a party. Oh yeah. After that party. Yo, again. If you never have enough parties. If you're in Kitchener, Brody <laughs> has sent out an open invitation on his Twitter I'm just for anybody to just show, Anybody at all. Just show up to his house. You're more than welcome to join him at his, nobody, apart his you apartment. Know, no, stop, but you know nobody's gonna show up. No, but it's an open, literally open invitation right now. Brody, put your address out there. Put it well, in chat. No, you gotta DM me for that. Slide in those He'll DMs and you can get my Addy. <laughs> He'll give it to you. He won't ask any questions or ask the idea at all. Okay, I it's time now for the ultimate crossover. I introduce to you this thing. <laughs> A 
Okay, so there are 13... That is, that is literally the best thing I've ever seen. There are 13 things in there in total. So it was a DBS, Abyss Watcher from Shotgun, Minecraft Inventory, <laughs> Fortnite Health, Mario Kart First Place, Zelda Music, Mario 64 Castle, Overwatch Ultimate Meter, Lego Star Wars Character, RuneScape Compass, Half-Life Reload Sounds, Portal Crosshairs, and Bernie Sanders playing to top it all off. That is literally the greatest video that has ever been made. Like, that guy just won the internet, for, like, for at least this week. Well, for, like, like today. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. That was yeah. so good, though. I want to see more. Of my, I want to play that, too. I want to see, like, how do you cram that much stuff in there? I yeah. kept finding new things, too. I didn't even realize right away the Half-Life sounds for the shooting and reload. And I'm Dang. like, and then the portal. It's I missed those. The portal like crosshairs, too, at the beginning. Wait, did you just, like, find them all there? Did you find a list of things? No, I, I needed other people's help on, oh, on the okay. internet. Oh, okay. I'm like, I found, whoa, I found most of them, but there were a yeah. couple that I that I did miss. That, okay. Yeah, I was just madness. That was good. It was Anyways, madness. There are a lot of good gaming tattoos out there, but we know this world needs ballast, as Thanos would like, and there are a ton of bad ones, too. This one, though, I'm about to show you is the best of both worlds. Here is the best worst <laughs> tattoo I have ever seen. What? <laughs> it's, what? It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, sorry. Imagine playing Mario Party on that. Oh, Brody. <laughs> you know what, though? Like, that was a good nipple for that. Yeah, yeah, no, sure. You know what I mean? Like, There's, some people have, yeah. like, different kinds of nipples. She's trying to say some people have some gross nipples. No, no, not at all. I, listen, there are no such thing as gross nipples. Anybody? I no, disagree. no, no. You can have whatever kind of... Listen, you just own your nipples, okay? That guy's really owning his nipple. He's proud of the protrusion of, <laughs> the that, protrusion. of that nipple. Because it does kind of look like the joystick. It, it, it absolutely it does. does. Okay. Just hope it doesn't break down like those controllers actually do. <laughs> I just wonder, like, how he would come up with that idea. Like, he was looking at himself in the mirror one day and, like, looking at his controller looking, and, like, looking at the mirror. He was probably doing this. <laughs> he was like, whoa, it's like a 64 controller. Okay, let's see your nipples. No! That's my Snapchat premium. Go sign up for that and you can get it. Oh, sub to Brody. He'll show you the good. That's it for our meter. Remember, you can hit us up on our socials. Just to say hi or send us some stuff to, stuff to react to. Someone type in exclamation mark socials right now to see all of them. I'll see you next week.